Hi, Brandon Artisan, president of Champion Strategies on an ongoing series for public speakers. Once again, if this is your first time in front of a group like our teachers that we need desperately out there, remember those youngsters are looking at you in the classroom if you're there. And remember, your job is to guide them to make sure that they do understand what your school district curriculum and also the parents and guardians. So please make sure what you say and hold them accountable. First time supervisors, first time managers, congratulations. You're in a situation where you have to be doing some meetings with your team members. We talked on that the last couple of lessons of what to do and how to present a good sales meeting. Or once again, maybe you're just the person that was always told you got a great speaking voice. Why don't you speak? And then when the virus you found out there was so much competition inside this box, and how do I get an opportunity? Or maybe you're one of those people that look at this public speaking as part of maybe a career change. Uh, there are great institutions, two years, four years. There's organizations that specialize on just front of the room or public speaking, all which can give you an idea and some comfort level on making public speaking a career. And then, then we have these folks that just peruse around the sites and uh, see what they can find, YouTube or otherwise, as far as content, because they have the discipline on their own to incorporate what they like and still be successful. So no matter why you're here, we glad you're here and we're going to continue on with our ongoing information about public speaking. So let's get to it. Today, I would like to talk about the seven principles of effective public speaking. There's always principles in anything that we do over time. Uh, we can trace, we can find out, we can get information. These things usually happen when people get up. So let's take a look at them. Uh, the first thing is perception. Perception. Stop trying to be a great public speaker. People want to listen to someone who is interesting, relaxed, comfortable. In the routine conversations that we have every day, we have no problem being ourselves. Yet, too often when we stand up to give a speech, something changes. We focus on the public at the expense of the speaking. So to become an effective public speaker, you must do just the opposite. Focus on the speaking and let go of the public. I want you to think of it as a conversation between you and the audience. If you can carry on a relaxed conversation with one, two or more people, you can give a great speech. Whether your audience consists of two people or 2,000 people, and whether you're talking about the latest medical or what you did today at work, be yourself. Talk directly to the people and make a connection with them. Now, for those that are in high school and college and still taking the disciplines of public speaking, i.e. debate, mock trial, now we know that that is a little bit different. But as far as what we're talking about, if you're gonna be in front of the room, let's have a conversation. Keep it conversational and you'll be amazed of what you can get. Second thing I would say is perfection, perfection. When you make a mistake, here's a little secret. No, no one cares about it, but, but, but you. 
Even the most accomplished public speakers will make a mistake at some point. Just keep in mind that you'll notice more than anyone in your audience, the most important thing a speaker can do after making a mistake is to just keep going. Don't, don't, don't stop. Unless the mistake was truly earth shattering, never apologize to the audience for the minor slip up. Unless they're reading the speech during your delivery, the audience won't know if you left out a word. They won't know if you said the wrong name or skipped a page because to err is human. A mistake can actually work in your favor because it allows you to connect with the audience. I don't want to hear from someone who's perfect. They will relate much more easily to someone who's real. Other thing I want you to think about is visualization. Let's visualize. If you can see it, you can speak it. Winners in all aspects of life have this in common. They practice, there's that word again, and you know I've used it if you've listened to any one of my YouTubes. Practice, practice, practice. So in this case, they practice visualization to achieve their goals. Visualization is something that you need to focus on. Where do I want to end? What is my end goal? Salespeople envision themselves closing a deal. The executives picture themselves developing new ventures. Athletes close their eyes and imagine themselves making that basket, hitting that home run, or breaking that record. Well, the same thing is true in public speaking. The best way to fight anxiety is to become more comfortable in your speaking. And the only way you can do that is to practice in the one place that you can make change. That's your mind. That's where the visualization comes in. Let's visualize on a consistent basis. You might well be doing that in certain aspects. But as soon as you can conquer any feeling of anxiety and visualize yourself reaching that goal, the better off you're going to be. How about discipline? Now we're going back to that word practice again. Practice makes perfectly good sense because the more you practice, the persistency to get better is going to be there. And then eventually the consistency will keep you there because the confidence the audience will see. There is no such one thing that you can practice on. Your goal is to be an effective public speaker. So like anything else in life, it takes practice. We often take communications for granted because we speak to people every day. but when you really look at this and direct how we want to be in front of a group, we want to give that same attention if you were a professional athlete entertainer. Remember, every world champion practices, practices. I don't care what it is. The more time we put in, the better we're going to be at any one of the disciplines when it comes to getting prepared for a presentation, during the presentation, and naturally after the presentation. How about description? Let's find a way when we are doing public speaking to make the topic personal. Whenever the topic and the audience responds best, I found out speakers personalize their communication. They take every opportunity that they can to put a face on the facts or the content, the walkaway points during your presentation. People like to hear about other people's experience, the triumphs, the tragedies, 
the everyday humorous anecdotes that comes up in life, tell the stories. Whenever possible, insert a personal interest element in your public speaking. Not only will it make your listeners warm up to you, but will also do wonders at putting them at ease. After all, on what your subject matter may be, you're the expertise, but I need the audience to start in visualizing audience to find out what they can take away to improve their life at their job at their work at their school how about inspiration we need to speak to serve now if that's hard to wrap around let's think about what our objective is what is the objective and what is the benefit that a speaker is trying to get whether someone is paying you to talk to that audience or you're doing it for a reward, or once again, you're a manager, let's think about the inspiration. How can you help your audience members achieve their goals? That's where this explosion, what is this nugget that you wanna leave with them as a takeaway point? And hopefully they'll start emulating some of that that they're comfortable with in their lives that's when you're a winner or if you are a public speaker there to speak you want the person who brought you there to come back and say hey we would love for you to come and do some more additional training or coaching with our team members and then the last thing i want to just mention is anticipation always leave the audience wanting more one of the most valuable lessons I've learned in my years in communications is that when it comes to public speaking, less is usually more. I don't think I've ever left a gathering and heard someone say, oh, I wish that the speaker would have spoken longer. On the other hand, I imagine that you probably can't count the times that you thought, I'm glad the speech is over. It seemed to go on forever. So, surprise your audience. Always make your presentation just a bit shorter than anticipated. If you're following the principles that I've laid out, this gives you more food for thought. But public speaking is a great thing in every aspect. But remember, people are watching you. They want to see how you do it. And when you do it well and consistent, that's when other folks say, you know what? I think that I probably can do it too. Once again, Brandon Hardison, president of Champion Strategies on our ongoing workshop of public speaking. Hope you got something out of today's presentation. So until next time, 